We've been going over and over and over this that, that God doesn't bring evil. God doesn't torment us. God doesn't, God doesn't do these things. So many people have been blaming God for things that He doesn't do. Circumcision ain't going to get you. Hatred ain't going to get you. The things of hatred that originate from hatred, we should be cut off from. Paul said that's the only way. He says, I wish that you be cut from anything that brings you trouble or pain or torment or hatred or envy or jealousy, any of these things. Let's get cut from it. Get away from it. Verse 4 it says, Christ is become, now this is our verse for today. Christ is become of no effect unto you. What? Man, that's a sad day, ain't it? Yes. Let me read it in our turn. Christ has become no effect on you. Man, when we get into a place that we're so persuaded or so mixed up that Jesus Christ Himself is not making any impact on us or an effect in our life. Man, we got big problems. Yeah, yeah. Big problems. And that's what Paul walks into this situation and says, Man, somebody, somebody, and he just uses that term openly, but somebody has confused y'all and made a big mess out of your knowledge. Got you believing that you can that you can be circumcised and then you can go and live however you want to live and do whatever you want to do and, and go back into that life and, and be tangled back into bondage and still go to heaven, still go into the arms of Jesus. The Bible tells us, God Himself tells us that no sin, no sin will be allowed in the heaven. The only way to be cleansed from sin is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the only way to have the blood poured upon us is to be saved. Amen. Saved, saved, saved. Yes. And the only way to be saved is to surrender to Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't surrender to the Bible. Don't surrender to a book or to a church or a preacher or a concept, but to Jesus. Because Jesus, my friend, is not still crucified. For on the third day, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was raised by God. Amen. And is alive and well today and is sitting on the right hand of God making intercession and that intercession is keeping God from destroying our silly, silly rooms. Mm -hmm. For the sin and the evil and the things that we, we do and think we're getting away with, the only way we're getting away with them is Jesus Christ that's saying give Him just a little Oh, give him a little. I've got the Holy Spirit sick on him. Mm -hmm. And he's either going to give in or give up. <laughs> to give in or give up. The Spirit convicts us that we need Jesus. We need to surrender to Jesus. Not just a thought that, listen, I believe today a hundred percent. A hundred percent that Jesus Christ is alive. Yeah. I believe with all that's in me that He arose from that very grave. He arose and He folded those clothes and He laid them on that grave table and the stone was rolled away by the power of God and He walked out and He stayed 40 days and 40 nights upon this earth and over five seen him alive and then I believe that two men watched him ascend into the heavens but I believe even more than that he's coming back yes. Amen. I believe this 
That's how I live my life. If, if, I, I'm a preacher because I believe this. I preach because I believe this. I live, I'm a Christian because I believe this. Because I believe these things, still is not enough. Because Satan himself believes. Demons tremble at the sound of his name. Now that means they believe him. What are they missing that I'm not missing? I love him. I'm going to tell you they don't love him. I love him because he saved me. I love him because even in the rotten, nasty, horrible place that I was in, he went to the cross for me. Now the Bible says, now listen to all these things that Jesus has done for us and to be in a state of mind. Can you imagine that you can be in a state of mind that Jesus Christ Himself can't be no effect on you? He can't even get your attention because you know you're in, in, in that frame of mind that, that, that you're doing what you're supposed to do and you don't want to hear nothing else. You won't let anything in, even the real Jesus, the real Word, the truth. So many of us today, your, your, your confusion might not be circumcision. Your confusion may not be the Lord's Supper. Your confusion may be that you can live however you want to and still claim to be saved. Satan is a master at giving you a line to believe in that's so close to being right, but it's just a little bit off. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. And people will live that life and be so tangled up in it that Christ Himself can't even break through. Now, I tell you, the power of Christ is unbelievable. When you can walk on water, that's pretty good, ain't it? Amen. When you can approach a blind man and say, Take a look at me. That's pretty good. And you can raise a child from dead. That's pretty cool. Well, you can take a man that's never walked, never walked, and tell him to get up and walk. And immediately they have the strength in their legs that they've been walking all their life. That's pretty good. With all this power, there's one thing Christ won't do. Is that, that what that is? Is to mess with you, to, to to cross a boundary that you've set. You understand? Christ won't make you be saved. He won't make you listen to him. You have to want to listen to him. You have to want to hear him. I can't believe that Christ, that we can be in a place where Christ can have no effect on us. Mm -hmm. That the things of the world have, has, has got a hold to us so much that the living Son of God and all that He is, and all that He does, and all that He has done, and all that He is going to do, can be right by us. And we'll be so tangled up that He can't have any effect on us. How can we want the world more than we want Jesus? Because somebody's lying to us. I 
that's fine. You know, we're, we're really basically good people. We really basically want to live a good life. We have morals. If we didn't have morals, the, the whole country would be in chaos without morals. We're generally decent people. But that doesn't make us safe. There's a guy that's telling us some big fat lies. And we've been believing him for thousands of years. You can call him whatever you want to. Satan, the devil, the prince of the air, Belgium, liar, roaring lion, whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is we believe in it. When the truth is right beside it. The truth is right beside us. Boy, you can tell when somebody's really saved. Man. Get out of their way. They're just going to work for the Lord. Be a part for the Lord. Now, we ain't even got to the sermon, but I don't, God, just, God just went in an entire different direction. My sermon was supposed to be either be an effect or infect. Infect or effect. But I ain't got there. God moved us on something else and we just went and pulled other way. Let me ask you this. Believe it or not, the only reason I would ask you something like this is because I care about you. You know what? If I didn't really care if you were saved or not, I'd just whip back and preach me a real good. Oh, uh, hallelujah sermon. We all dance and, and get and hey, woo! We'd all be happy and you'd all think good thoughts of me. And we'd go home and, and y'all maybe wouldn't eat me for lunch and, and you know, I, I, I would just be better off. But I care about you. I mean I really care about you. And I'd rather you not like me. Or think I'm too over the top. I preach too long or I talk too much or I wish you'd have some disagreement with me but be safe. Yes. I guarantee you, I'll even take this. If you want me to leave, yeah, I'm the wrong preacher for you. And you're waiting to be saved. I'm gone. If you'll get saved today, I'll, I'll leave. I'll pack up my family you'll truly get saved today, I'll leave. I care about it more than anything else. Now, let me ask you this question. Is Christ affecting your life? Does He affect what you do the rest of this day? Does He affect what you're going to do tomorrow? Or is He just around? Everybody, they rise close. No music, no nothing today. Just.